Hello, everyone. It's great to have you join us today for this Distributech Plus. This session is titled SCE's Grid Modernization Journey. It's being sponsored by GE Digital. Our two presenters today are Avnesh Jayantilya uh, of GE Digital and Brendan Russell of Southern California Edison. My name is Teresa Hansen. I'm the Vice President of Content here at Clarion Energy, and I will be uh, your moderator for today. Before I formally introduce our speakers, I need to go over just a few housekeeping items with you. Uh, you should be able to see the housekeeping slide on your screen right now. Uh, we highly recommend that you shut down any applications that you don't need to have running in the background for better performance and so that you can concentrate on what you're seeing and hearing in the presentation. Also, uh, we recommend Google Chrome, but I'm going to say if you're not in Google Chrome and everything is working for you, I'm certainly not going to tell you that you need to get out and go back and get back in with Google Chrome. However, if you do start to have any issues, that might be something that you keep in mind. Also, if you're having audio issues, you might not be able to hear me, but if you can, please make sure you click the blue button that says join with computer audio. We will have some time for Q&A at the end of uh, the presentations today. So you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask a question. And even though we're not going to address the questions until near the end of the sessions, you can type them in at any time. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, you don't need to wait until the end of the session. Also, if you have any technical issues, use that same Q&A feature and someone from our technical support team will get with you and hopefully can, can remedy any issues that you might be having. You can use the Distributech Plus platform to network with attendees as well as today's speakers in this session. So we encourage you to explore it at your leisure. leisure. Um, it can be after this presentation or really at any time. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what uh, makes Distributech Plus different than just a webinar. You, you can go in and, and um, get to know, you know, look and see who else is in the platform, who else is watching our, our sessions and of course connect with our speakers. So we encourage you to, to use the platform for that. So now that's it for the housekeeping items. I'm now gonna introduce you to today's speakers. First, we have Dr. Avnesh Jayan Tila, and he is the Advanced Distribution Management Solutions or ADMS Product Director at GE Digital Grid Software Solutions. Let me put the, there we go. He joined GE um, in 1999. At that time, it was Austin. He is also a senior member of IEEE Power and Energy Society, in which he was the past chair of the IEEE PES Distribution System Operations and Planning Subcommittee, as well as the uh, um, past chair of IEEE PES Systems Operations and Control Center Subcommittee. Brendan Russell is the Chief Architect for Grid Management Systems at Southern California Edison, and he has 20 years of utility industry experience. He is currently leading the Grid Management System Program at Southern California Edison, uh, he is leading the implementation of new digital technologies and operational analytics into SE's grid, uh, grid, modernizing SE's grid control and management capabilities in support of its clean power and electrification pathway vision. Before moving to the United States in 2011, he worked for Endeavor Energy in Australia, uh, and that's the distribution network operator for the greater Sydney region. You can read more about both of our speakers by visiting their profile pages in the Distribute Plus platform. So that's it for me, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. And I'll now turn the program over to you. Thank you very much, Teresa. Good morning, everybody, and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Avnish Jayantilal. And as uh, Teresa mentioned, I'm from General Electric. Uh, so over the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, I, with, along with uh, Brendan, will provide you a quick update of uh, the GE product suite. Uh, in ADMS and also uh, Brandon will dive further into SE's grid modernization uh, program. So with that, I've got to provide the uh, usual slide up front to uh, tell you what GE allows me to say and not to say. Um, when we look at the evolving utility landscape, there are a number of key drivers that, uh, that we see across our customers globally. Uh, whether it be in North America, in Europe, in Asia Pacific, uh, in Latin America, et cetera. And, and of course, one of the key drivers that, that we're starting to see there is in the area of uh, renewables. That's whether it's grid connected renewables or behind the meter renewables. And uh, we're starting to see that. And because of that, we're starting to see some additional complexity in how utilities are 
or are required to manage grid reliability and resiliency for both transmission and distribution. Uh, to accomplish some of that, we've seen an unprecedented rate of change in terms of new technologies being introduced onto the grid to help with that management of that complexity. Uh, this can include uh, distribution automation devices, smart meter devices, phase of measurement devices, et cetera. And of course, as you start to deploy these devices, the amount of data created from these devices is uh, significantly larger than your traditional SCADA system. And you now enter into the challenge of a data tsunami that's starting to impact the control room operation side of the utility. So there's a significant number of impacts from this rise of renewables and DERs. And this has created a need to transform how data is uh, acquired, how data is validated, how data is transformed into real world information that's actionable from the control room. Uh, within GE, um, we, we provide a number of solutions for uh, both uh, electric utilities, gas utilities, and also telcos. Uh, we, of course, we have our uh, starting from geospatial uh, network management and digital twin <coughs> technologies, which we've deployed globally uh, from the planning and modeling side. <coughs> from the asset control side, we have a number of solutions spanning uh, market management, uh, transmission management, and distribution management, including DERMS. And today we will address some of these solutions in the distribution side uh, further. Uh, we also have a number of solutions in the analytics side in terms of data modeling for analytics or data validation and cleanup, uh, also in the area of storm preparation in terms of uh, analyzing the impacts on the storm. Uh, and more recently, we've also delved into inertia uh, monitoring uh, for, for transmission side customers uh, due to the uh, loss of inertia from uh, the rise of renewables. Of course, we also have a, a mobile platform that, that is deployed globally, uh, specifically on the distribution side uh, to help with the management of uh, data and work uh, within the utility side. So today we're going to dive a little further into uh, GE's uh, DR Aware ADMS and the ADMS we're deploying at SE as we speak. The, the, the ADMS includes a number of solutions, including uh, distribution optimization, which is your traditional SCADA DMS, but the ability now to run your applications in closed loop and the benefits it brings to reliability and resiliency of the grid. Uh, there is also outage response, which is your traditional outage management solutions, but now coupled with uh, mobility solutions so that you can move the control room from within a building to outside uh, the uh, to the field basically so you're enabling more work to be done more efficiently by folks outside the control room and then finally in the area of renewables in dr orchestration which is a key driver for se and many other customers that we work with uh, the introduction of both grid connected and also behind the meter dr and the need to not just model these devices within the control systems and within the GIS, but also in terms of orchestrating these uh, new assets so that they are fully utilized and the utility can then manage grid reliability and resiliency more effectively. So the number of things we're working on with a, a few of our customers globally, um, again, just to close out, uh, as I mentioned, you know, a number of solutions that we deploy in the area of ADMS. Uh, of course, tied to that are all the other solutions I talked about around you know, geospatial network modeling, in terms of cybersecurity and managing not just grid devices, but also DR assets out in the field, uh, model management in terms of end-to-end -end TND model management, uh, mobility in terms of enabling a more efficient uh, field force for working seamlessly digitally with the control room. Analytics that I mentioned in terms of modeling the data, analyzing the data, uh, preparing the utility for the next major storm or next major event that may occur. And then finally, common TND solutions across the board. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Brendan Russell from uh, SCE. Thank you very much for your time.
Thank you, Avinash. I appreciate it. Um, and thanks to G for their partnership. Um, and what I'm going to cover as far as our large technological uh, undertaking, as far as advancing our grid management capabilities for Southern California Edison. Uh, Avinash, are you able to advance to the next slide? So Avinash touched on this. So we're going to talk about um, what we're calling our grid management system, which um, includes ADMS and includes a, a number of systems, including DERMS, short-term forecasting, device management, adaptive protection, a lot of new greenfield capabilities that are required to um, modernize and, and to be honest, to, to be able to meet some of the, a lot of the business um, and industry challenges that we're facing right now, especially in California. Um, we can advance to the next slide. So before I get into that, I just a quick overview of Southern California Edison. Um, so we have about just shy of 13,000 um, employees. Uh, we service about 15 million customers in Southern California. Uh, we have about 118,000 miles of distribution transmission lines and our service territory spans about 50,000 square miles. Um, we currently serve about 48% of our power delivered to our customers today is carbon free. Um, so it's pretty significant. Uh, we've made significant strides there in, in the last uh, decade to increase uh, clean energy production and delivery to our customers. Uh, currently, uh, we invest about uh, 4.8 billion in capital yearly just on our distribution, just on our grid in Southern California. Uh, if we can, um, a couple of things, uh, if anyone's interested, uh, you can go to our site. We've published several white, white papers recently, what we call Pathway 2045, lays out our goal and vision for decarbonizing um, the economy um, by to 100% by 2045. So we've laid out a very detailed um, strategy there, looking at uh, all aspects of the economy from electrification to uh, transportation buildings, uh, deep decarbonization of the electric sector. Um, and also recently we, we published our Reimagine the Grid white paper, which takes that vision and then outlines uh, a comprehensive assessment of how the grid needs to change over the next 25 years to be able to meet those objectives. Um, so, and, uh, and well, actually one part of those, that investment that we've laid out in there is the grid management system, which we're gonna talk about and focus on today. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, Avnesh. So back in uh, 2017, we actually started looking at the grid sort of with a forward looking lens, looking at the various regulatory customer trends, um, as well as uh, climate policy that was coming on the horizon and, and really taking all that into account to understand how our grid needs to be managed um, 10, 20 years from now to be able to, to manage the, the, the various challenges and changes that are happening, uh, that are happening right now. Um, so firstly, uh, you know, there was, there was a number of key challenges that come up, some short term. Um, we obviously had a desire to improve our SAIDI CMI metrics, um, if, you know, customer minutes of interruption, be able to reduce those, provide greater reliability to our customer base. Um, we also saw that the grid was actually becoming a lot more complex uh, to manage. And this was, you know, we were experiencing parts, parts of our service territory where we have reverse power flows going back into the substations because of large penetration of DERS, DERs on, on our system, uh, mass load issues that we were experiencing. And we came to the realization we needed new tools really new, new tools along with processes to be able to uh, meet these challenges that, that are facing us. In addition, we also you know, wanted to look at operating our grid and have, having the right technologies 
in place where we can utilize DERs to the benefit of the grid, synchronizing their operations with the reliability operations of the grid, um, it, which in turn creates value, right? And in turn can accelerate adoption as well. Um, so part of that, we developed about 50 use cases. We casted a pretty uh, wide net at the time um, and conducted a, a, a very comprehensive RFP where we went out um, looking for these capabilities. Um, what, what you see on this slide is our, our roadmap over the next four years, uh, working with our partner here, General Electric, uh, to deploy um, what we're gonna do in three releases, starting with refreshing our foundational skater environment to, to be able to uh, support new protocols, support the influx of a lot more distribution automation and help meet the data tsunami that uh, Avnesh talked about at the beginning. Um, and then release one, we're looking at replacing our OMS DMS with a DER aware ADMS system that's integrated with uh, a DERMS system and mobile capabilities, being able to expose ADMS capabilities outside the control room. And then uh, release two is a lot of our forward-looking greenfield functionality that um, we're partnering up with GE um, and other subcontractors to be able to deliver um, those new capabilities that we'll talk about later in this presentation. We can advance. Nash. So when we looked at this and we ca cast out the net um, out there, uh, we came to the conclusion that, you know, it was, you know, we needed a, a system of systems approach to be able to bring these capabilities to life. Um, and part of that was the realization that a lot of the foundational architecture of a lot of our legacy SCADA systems in the past are really limited in in their ability to scale to meet the data. So to give everyone an example, like today, you know, our SCADA system could support around 1.5 million data points that it processes, stores, calculates uh, constantly. We did our calculations and we needed to scale this thing 50 to 70 fold up to 50 to 70 million data points, you know, bringing in all the data from our automation as well as what would come in from DERs in the field and being able to calculate, store, process, and then even make sense of that data to the operator. So we needed a, a, a foundationally a different platform to support our future needs. Um, and part of that was when we looked out there, um, our partnering up with GE's North Star architecture approach gives us the ability to horizontally scale the infrastructure over time. So as we bring in more data, we can scale our infrastructure horizontally instead of vertically, which allows us to um, be agile and actually scale over time and not have to do these large refreshes, you know, every time we, have a limitation issue. So um, there was some some key learnings there that you know we took away. And there's a lot of value to that, you know, being able to decouple your hardware, software upgrades um, independently, not doing these large refreshes every five years that take two years to do. So our whole methodology and approach was to go away from that approach and adopt a more agile approach where we can ultimately scale this thing over time. Um, and then ultimately we can uh, add functionality over time without having to do large upgrades to, to the actual system. Um, one other point to be made is cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, I think for all of us, utilities, especially now is coming to the forefront. Uh, we're starting to um, experience a lot, uh, a lot more threats. Um, from, from various bad actors out there. And we need to build cybersecurity in from the day, from the first day one. I mean, it can't be an afterthought. It can't be something we just do after we implement the system. We need to build it deeper into the system and be able to, um, you, know, uh, you know, as a cybersecurity expert will say, hope for the best, plan for the worst. 
And in planning for the worst, you need to really consider that up front. And that's something we took to heart and G's um, been actively working with us on that to, to be able to uh, build better cybersecurity into, into our systems and into their product as well. Uh, if we can advance to the next slide. Uh, this, this slide gives you a, a, a day in the life view of what the operator will experience with when we go live with the ADMS and DERMS. Um, today, just to give everyone sort of a feel for what, what it's like in the control room, our, our operator switches between three systems, between our energy management system, our distribution management system, and our outage management system. So they're moving, they almost, they have this swivel chair and they can move, move to various systems. And each of those has, you know, the integration between them is not that good. Um, so our goal in this project and in this undertaking was to really develop a single pane of glass um, for the operator, provide a consolidated view of all distribution operations. And, and we see that this is a need um, that we need to move this way. You know, not only it provides a better user experience, but the grid is fundamentally becoming a lot more complicated to manage. Um, and with a lot of complexity, there's potential um, shortcomings that can result in human performance errors and ultimately safety errors on the grid. Um, and so one of our big focus here was to be able to provide that consolidated view for operations and then take it beyond the control room, take it outside the building, take it out to the field and provide that same transparency of what the operator is seeing to field crews in the field that will allow, that will allow them you know, to see what's happening. It actually results in, in a lot better safety environment um, as well as improves overall communication flow between you know, the work that's being done in the field and the management of the grid that's being done in the grid management centers. Um, so that, that was another uh, big uh, takeaway point uh, here for this slide. Uh, and, and just a quick, uh, quick overview, what you see in orange here in the slide outlines all the net new capabilities and functions that we're going to be deploying as part of this system. If we can advance. A big, uh, a big piece of the ADMS, um, and uh, you know, Avnesh covered this at the beginning, is uh, introduces a lot more advanced operator functions. Um, so here sort of outlines the key operator functions that we're going to be implementing as part of the system. Um, and we sort of, we categorize them into two different categories. Um, one network analysis functions provides, uh, so distribution state estimation, study mode. These are capabilities that the operator can see the the, provide situational awareness of the grid, estimates power flows down to segments, down all the way down to the customer where the customer is connected. Uh, this is a, a level of capabilities we don't have today um, on the system. Um, and then study mode allows the operator to perform what if functions, uh, being able to really, you know, test some of those uh, programs, switching programs out before we actually execute them on the grid. Um, and then, you know, the next category is what we call the advanced operator functions. Um, things like plan load operating, uh, PLOS, um, which allows the operator to select a device and it'll develop, automatically develop a, develop a switching plan. What could take two hours could be done in a matter of uh, 10 to 20 minutes. Um, surgical load shed, uh, check before operate. A lot of these functions provide a lot of additional safety checks um, and almost uh, recommendations to the operator uh, before actions taken. Uh, and then LVM, uh, that's something else which is going to replace our legacy vault bar application uh, with which will allow us to control cat banks, voltage regulators, and smart inverters, uh, coordinating all their operations to be able to minimize, uh, to be able to optimize voltage and bar. 
And then um, if we uh, progress to the next slide, uh, we'll cover Blizzard. And this, this was really for SCE, this was one of the main uh, business case applications that we could actually quantify a lot of the investment that we're proposing here on the on the on this stack, um, which was being able to provide semi-automated, fully automated uh, switching of um, faults on the grid. So we can Blizzard uh, stands for fault location isolation and service restoration. It, it has the ability to uh, assist operations, uh, the operators on the grid when there's a fault. Um, this particularly becomes more important when there's storm events and there's a lot of faults, you know, unplanned outages that are happening on the grid all at once. Um, so it reduces the operator's workload, but at the same time, it restores uh, customers' power quickly, um, resulting in um, safety reduction um, and reduction in customer minutes of interruption. Uh, and then uh, one, one other point to make about this, uh, we, we have a two-stage approach to roll this out. Um, we plan to roll out the assisted switching functionality, which is what the semi-automated um, Blizzard capability will provide a recommendation to the operator and the operator will then make the final decision to execute that recommendation. And then the closed loop uh, Blizzard, which is eventually where we wanna get to, to roll this out across all our 4,500 circuits at Southern California Edison, where um, the systems identifying the fault and automatically isolating and restoring as much power as possible without, without any operator intervention. We advance to the next slide. Part of uh, our release one as well is deploying our base Durham's functionality. Um, so this is something we've been partnering with General Electric on um, to develop this, not as a standalone solution, but integrated into the ADMS. Um, at, uh, in, California, in Southern California, we have uh, a number of business drivers um, seeking this capability sooner than later. Uh, part of uh, some of the Rule 21 um, Smart Inverter Working Group that we're doing in California, uh, we have a goal to enable 23.5 communications, which is going to be the de facto communication protocol for DERs um, for all utility to DER communications. So part of that is we're um, building out the 2035 communication head ends and the infrastructure that's tied back into the ADMS to bring in that data so we can start streaming that data into our operational system. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we have uh, part of our distribution resource plan that we file with um, the California Public Utilities Commission on a, on a two-year basis. Uh, we're now starting to deploy what we call capital deferral projects with the intent to be able to dispatch a portfolio of DERS in place of actually doing poles and wires upgrades on the grid. This allows us to um, this allows us to be able to, you know, provide circuit relief for those 15, 16 days of the year where you know we have uh, you know peak loading conditions on the grid um, and not. And, and be able to leverage our existing infrastructure without having to do um, intensive upgrades of our poles and wires. Uh, next slide, if we can move on. Getting into um, release two, this is our final release. And this, this is something where we're actually gonna transition from a, a waterfall type project deployment to a more agile deployment um, with the intent of having the base ADMS platform in, we can start deploying functionality 
incrementally over time. So part of our roadmap um, is to, after we go live with the ADMS, is to deploy new functionality every six months into our environments at SCE and, and start turning on a lot of these new capabilities. So release, release two, like I mentioned before, it's full of a lot of new greenfield technologies focused on, um, you know, enhancing our DR management capabilities. Um, so this goes beyond the deferral project dispatches, being able to provide more, being able to open up DRs to provide more reliability services to our grid. Um, you know, includes uh, being able to also orchestrate a lot of the advanced Rule 21 smart inverter functions um, that are that are coming available within smart inverters. Um, it also allows uh, us to, um, you know, part of our, our goal is to be able to optimize the grid to, to least cost, um, leveraging DURS, not just grid equipment, but leveraging DURS and grid equipment together holistically. Part of what we're looking at deploying is also an optimization engine similar to what they do um, on the transmission or in the wholesale market, performing a multi-interval power flow, optimal power flow that's looking a day ahead um, and up optimizing these resources um, in the 24, 48 hour period. Um, in addition, um, similar to what, what exists on the wholesale transmission side today is also bringing forecasting short-term forecasting into the fold. Um, and part of that is, is doing a five minute to 48 hour forecast and then integrating that into the ADMS. So part of you know, the complexity of managing the distribution grid in the future is, is not managing it for a point in time, but managing it over a time horizon, similar to what they do on the transmission side. So, so there's a bit of a theme here. There's a lot of capabilities that exist at the transmission side that we're starting to bring into distribution just because of the complexity of, of managing um, a lot of resources um, on, on the grid. And then uh, a few other things to point out here. Adaptive protection is a new concept we developed at SCE focused on you know, remotely changing our protection settings um, remotely when there's um, when there's a circuit reconfiguration, we see this as a as a, a core requirement or capability that we need to enable as we look out into the future. And then, obviously, uh, and then with that as well is a whole bunch of ADMS enhancements focused on enabling new wildfire capabilities for mitigating wildfires, especially in Southern California. We had a, a big year last year with wildfires and we're starting to do a lot more mitigation efforts, not just through vegetation um, uh, mitigation efforts, but through our real-time operations as well. We can advance. And then uh, this, is, this is our last slide, um, probably the most important slide uh, it's with an undertaking of, uh, of this size and complexity, you know, we didn't want to take the traditional approach. Um, we wanted to take, and, and something we've been big at at SCE is adopting agile methodology throughout all our projects. Uh, part of our goals is to be able to mitigate risk in, in, a, in a project like this, uh, but also you know, working with GE, we're, we're, look, we're deploying uh, DevOps in the sense that we can get um, instant, um, we, can, we can get hold of the uh, software being developed by their developers sooner than later, which allows us to test the software, shifting the te testing less uh, to the left, um, instead of waiting till we get into a formal FAT or SAT process shifting it left that allows us to give instant feedback to the developer 
that can help identify, uh, identify uh, requirements gaps. It can also identify any, any potential defects that need to be mitigated. Um, this is something we've adopted within the project. We see this as key to being successful here. We also see it as key to being able to um, seek the, the benefits sooner and, and not have to wait years for, for these capabilities to come online. Um, we, you know, by, by shifting, shifting the testing left, uh, being close to the developers between the product teams and the project teams, um, there's, there's definitely benefits, um, you know, uh, that, that, that as, as a, as a customer, we can reap, um, uh, it, it does require a change in a whole new mindset on how you do projects. Um, it also requires a whole new test infrastructure, test automation tools that will be required. Um, and we're, we've been doing that and we've had a lot of success. Uh, we're early on in the process, but uh, over time, this is something we believe will speed up the process um, and be able to allow us to deploy capabilities sooner. And uh, that's that's all I have on my my slides. Any any questions? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Brendan and, and Avnesh. Actually, we have quite a few questions, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. We don't have a lot of time. I'm going to change my slides uh, in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on the questions. So um, we have quite a few here. Um, let me start. Let's see. So, um, Brendan, I think a lot of them are for you, wanting to know what SCE is doing. It says, is SCE, tra uh, is SCE transitioning to GE ADMS from another DMS vendor, or are you in the process of building your first ADMS system? That's a good question. Um, yes, yeah, so, so currently we have um, a, a DMS system, and it's a DMS system that has, doesn't have all the advanced applications that you would see in an ADMS. Uh, does basic uh, SCADA functionality and some SCADA, um, SCADA applications like uh, Vault Bar Control. It's not model-based, um, but it, it's really a, a SCADA system when you, a distribution SCADA system when you look at it. Um, and yes, this is our first time transitioning to an ADMS. Uh, we have a, a separate OMS system today and a separate uh, DSCADA, you could call it a DSCADA system. And ultimately we're gonna go from those two separate legacy products to, to the GE ADMS product. All right, uh, we have another one here. It says, how are you uh, addressing the increasing levels of DER on your distribution grid in your ADMS solution? That's, that's a great question. And I, I can start with that. And I don't know if Avnesh, you can jump in as well. Uh, so a lot of the ADMS applications, when we looked at them and evaluated various products out there, um, you know, our big focus was how does it solve a lot of the DER problems? And I'll give you an example, uh, mask load or shadow load. Uh, there's various names out there in the industry. Um, that's, that's a foundational cap capability that we saw. And, you know, a lot of the ADMS applications that GE is offering has the ability to solve the mass load, expose that to the operator. Uh, applications like Flizza take into account um, when DERs drop off the circuit, when they come on the circuit as we're restoring the circuit um, throughout. Uh, and then, you know, LVM, the GE's Volt Bar control application incorporates smart inverter controls. So foundationally, um, there's a lot of things that need to go into an ADMS to make it DR aware. Uh, another example is a lot of the smart inverter functions. They need to be built into the power flow engine of the ADMS. So all those things were factored in um, as part of this project. Okay, um, let's go to another one here. Um, it says, will your derms cover behind the meter resources? Yes, it will. 
So part of uh, part of the ADMS and the DERMS, um, so the DERMS will talk is, the plan is to establish communications between what we call our utility DERMS um, and aggregators, as well as large direct connect uh, DERs on the system. So our plan, and then in the ADMS, we're modeling the behind the meter DERs so we can understand the impact of those behind the meter DERs on the system. So a combination of what we're doing with opening communications up throughout, through the DERMS, uh, through the GE DERMS product that we're deploying at SCE out to aggregators will allow behind the meter DER telemetry to come into the system. And then uh, we're modeling the behind the meter DERs in the ADMS so we can understand the impact of, of what's happening and what, what the effect is on the grid. All right, um, here's another one. It says over the time period in, in your roadmap, will microgrids either privately owned or owned by the utility be planned in your service territory? And if so, do they need to use GE's controls and software since they are your ADMS partner? That's a great question. And we've had a lot of experience uh, with microgrids recently, uh, especially in California with wildfires. We're looking at that as ways where we can maintain uh, power to our customers when we have to de-energize some of our high risk power lines uh, where we're going through a lot of um, wild, you know, wild uh, forestry areas, etc. cetera. Um, so, to answer that question, no, you don't need the GE controls. Um, you know, the, the, the ADMS will be, we think of it as a, as the mothership in the sense that it's going to coordinate the, the and send signals to all these microgrid controllers out in the field, but the microgrid controllers could be, could be any um, make or model as long as they support the, the standard protocols like DMP, 61850, um, that they could be of any make or model, yeah. Okay, well, we're running out of time. I'm gonna ask one last question here. And I think this is one that both of you maybe wanna weigh in on. It says, in the longer term, do you see artificial intelligence and machine learning playing a role in grid modernization? And if yes, how do you see them contributing? Do you want me to go first, Avnesh? Or yeah. I, okay, so uh, I, I didn't quite cover it, but in our release two, we're actually deploying a lot of artificial intelligence, machine learning capabilities. Um, part one of one of the capabilities we've actually developed and we're going to deploy is a high impedance fault detection for uh, public safety reasons. Um, so we've <clears throat> you know, developed uh, the, the machine learning alg algorithm and we're actually going to integrate that into the product and it's going to integrate with the ADMS and when there is a high impedance fault or a wire down event uh, it will send a signal to the ADMS to automatically isolate and de-energize that live conductor. Um, so that's one example. Um, I'll, I think Avnesh and on the product side they're looking at various other various um, things as well in this area. Up next, I think you're on mute. You're mute, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, so yes, so thank you, Brandon. So today AI and ML does play a pretty large role uh, within uh, the ADMS and within the solution portfolio that I introduced from GE. Uh, in fact, we have quite a number of solutions within the grid analytics space that we're also planning to deploy with um, with SCE or we'll release one and release two that uses core AI and ML. Uh, one of them is in the area of uh, network connectivity analysis, which is studying the quality of the network and the phasing of the network. Another area is, uh, as Brendan mentioned, in the area of high, high impedance fall location uh, we have quite a few other areas we're looking at as well in terms of inertia management, uh, more on the transmission side and sub-transmission side. And uh, of course, uh, we, we're also starting to try to figure out how kind of some of the existing applications within the ADMS can be enhanced using AI and machine learning. So yes, the future is bright for AI and ML. 
um, and uh, GE is definitely investing uh, with the help of our customers like SCE and others in, uh, in deploying these new technologies. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. That was a great presentation, great discussion. We have a lot of questions left that we don't have time to get to, but those will we'll go to our presenters and hopefully they'll be able to get back with you. Um, also, before we sign off, I want to thank GE Digital for sponsoring this session. Uh, we really appreciate their support. Also, I want to thank all of you for being on this uh, session with us. I know that you have busy schedules and we appreciate you um, joining us today. Also, I want to let you know that the session will be available on demand within 48 hours. And at that time, several of you have asked about PowerPoint uh, presentations. They, there will be a link to the PowerPoint presentation in the on-demand area. So you can check back uh, for the on-demand and find those. So um, as you see here on your screen, we have some new dates for Distribute Tech. Um, we love these virtual events, but we still believe that live events are awesome. So we are looking forward to seeing all of you face-to-face -face, uh, January 26th through the 28th of 2022, so a year from now in Dallas, Texas. So please put that on your schedule. We hope that you will um, be there with us. We're, like I said, we're really looking forward to it. Um, I want to remind you also that in 15 minutes, we have another session starting. It starts at 2.30 Central Time. It's uh, titled Evaluation of ADMS Applications for Utilities Using NREL's Testbed. Uh, we hope that you will um, join us to hear some speakers from Holy Cross Energy, San Diego Gas and Electric, the National Renewable Energy Lab, and Schneider Electric. So uh, again, thank you everyone and have a great day.